What's up guys, my name is Abdul Nafi. Welcome back to a brand new video. And in this one, we're going to be learning how I did the lighting of this whole scene. I'm going to be giving you like a lighting breakdown of the scene and I'm going to be showing you how to like make this from scratch. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. So this is basically our lighting setup right now. Uh, so you can see that all the lights are in this um, collection. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be disabling this whole collection or rather I'm just going to be hiding all the lights individually. And so I can like basically show you what each light does and why i added it right because that's very important like every light that you add in your scene you need to have you need to make sure that it sort of like serves a purpose right and it makes some meaningful change to your render so you can see that we started off with a completely black scene completely dark scene you can see that i have this um uh, basically cylinder which i sort of like um what do you call it added a bevel modifier to this added a subdivision surface modifier to this and then i just you know smoothed it out and also i removed the top just so i can like see better so you're gonna see uh, why i did this in just a bit but for now just like um know that we have this and you can see that this part also has lighting by default that's what that was in the model so we didn't like do that by ourselves but let's go ahead and get started with the lighting so the first light that i added was basically a key light so you can see that it is um, it's basically an area light, but I did change the shape to disc instead of rectangle. Reason for that is because I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to show you the reason. So you can see that right here, um, the reflections in the buttons, they're like pretty sharp. You can see the actual rectangle in the shapes in the, in the buttons. But if I just change it to something like disc, you can see that now the reflections are a lot more smooth and it looks a lot more pleasing to the eye, right? So this sort of like lights the main part of our subject and it sort of, you know, just like um, gives us some light, but obviously it looks pretty trash right now. So we're going to move on with the other lights. The second light that I added was basically a rim light. So this light, basically what it does is that it just sort of um, highlights or like accentuates the background features and it sort of separates the background from our object. So if I just turn it off, you can see that you can't really tell where the controller really ends and where the background starts. It sort of just blends in pretty well because the colors are very similar. But if I turn this on, you can see you can clearly tell where the controller ends and it sort of highlights the shape of the controller, right? So that's the reason why we added this um, light at the back. And if you talk about power and stuff, this is 1.5 watts. Um, but again, all these values are going to depend on the scale that you have of your object. Sometimes you're going to need a, like much higher power. Sometimes you're going to need much lesser power. But yeah, so you can see that the rim light is slightly lower in power than our key light. So next light that I added was basically another sort of a rim light. But this sort of just highlights this part of the scene. Because if I remove it, you can see that this part of the scene is completely dark. You can't really see anything basically in the scene. So, you know, uh, this, in this part of the scene. So this sort of like just adds a little bit of more contouring and a little bit of more, you know, lighting to the back part. This part is still dark. We're going to fix that in just a bit. But, you know, we just need to like highlight the back. After that, I added another light. Basically, this was just here. So this was sort of like a fill light to just fill in some of the shadows and stuff like that, you know. Um, and yeah, so that was our light that I added. Um, and so at this point, you can see that the render is really coming together and really starts to look better. Um, it, still, it still looks pretty bad, if I'm being honest, because um, a lot of the parts at the bottom, especially, are like pretty dark. But you can see that it's, you know, coming together pretty well. So to take care of the uh, shadows at the bottom, we added a bigger light, a much bigger light. This is a fill light for the bottom. So if I remove it back, you can see that uh, the bottom part is like pretty dark. But if I add it, the bottom part really it just really just fills in the shadows and just makes it look a little more pleasing. And also also because this part is like a little reflective, it sort of like also adds more reflections to this part. Because right now you can see that it's pretty dull and flat, but this sort of gives more depth, if that makes sense. Um, so I think this light is a very, very important light. Um, a lot of people, a lot of times what people do is they skip over the fill lights They do, or they don't like give them that much importance. I think fill lights are extremely, extremely important, especially in 3D. So yeah, definitely don't skip over them. And so I think at this point, we're basically done with the controller. Now we're just moving on to the background, right? So for the background, what I did was I have the cylinder and I'm going to add some lights to the cylinder. So the first light that I added was basically of this blue color. This is the PSY blue color. Um, and the power you can see that is uh, it's eight um, watts. And if I just move here, if I move my camera, you can see that that light sort of just lights up the background, which also has basically a white material so that it, you know, reflects more of the light that bounces on it. And this really sort of adds like a gradient effect to the background and only one light wouldn't have been enough. So that's why we added more lights as well. So you can see that this, my bad, this other light was here and I added like, added, added like these lights on all four corners so that we can like, you know, illuminate the background pretty well. And after, you know, we added all the lights, you can see that it looks much, much better. 
So you can see our final result actually looks really, really good. And the reason for that is because obviously, you know, we have an even, evenly lit background, but it's not like perfectly even because then it would just look like you have a blue image at the back. You know, this sort of shows you like there, there is a little bit of gradient going on. And as you move in your scene, you can see that some parts are going to be more blue. Some, sorry, some parts are going to be brighter. Some parts are going to be darker. So yeah, it just adds that sort of variation, right? So that's a very important thing to do. And so I hope you guys learned something new and I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Now, if you want to learn how to make this whole scene from scratch, if you want to watch a full course of this scene of how to like build this whole scene and also how to make an animation. So this is basically what I'm playing is basically an animation. It's pretty noisy right now, but you, you get the idea. Um, if you want to make this whole animation from scratch um, in Blender 3D, then be sure to check out my course. The link is going to be in the description. We're going to be covering a lot in that course. We're going to be learning quite a lot. Um, we're going to be making this whole animation from scratch. Even if you're a beginner, you're going to find this course pretty, pretty easy. Um, so yeah, if you're into Blender and you want to take your product animation skills to the next level, be sure to check that course out. And yeah, apart from that, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Be sure to like this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.